This is unreal. We should not be seeing this this far south. Holy cow. Unreal. <laughs> okay, we're time lapsing this. What's up, guys? Welcome to uh, an extremely unplanned astro episode. <laughs> this is pretty gnarly. So, we were chilling at the house, camera lady and I, watching uh, some e evening shows, and I was just scrolling on Instagram, and everybody's Everybody and their dogs literally are posting uh, about the aurora and the solar storm and the G5 and all that stuff. And of course, like, why would I care? I'm in southern New Mexico. <laughs> like, you know, I, I can see Mexico from here. <laughs> I didn't think anything of it, but I knew it was a super clear night and I just wanted to go look outside of my driveway. And uh, I live in a small mountain town, lots of not very much light and pollution. So I just grabbed my phone and I took this shot. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff on my phone. You know, I know how to use phones. Um, I thought maybe the white balance was a little off or maybe the moonlight was messing with it or the halogen lights from the streets, all of that, because this, this is intense, you know, for a phone shot. Yeah, so I just, I decided to uh, grab the gear and, and head out. We're 20 minutes out of town in some very, very dark Bortle 2 skies, Bortle 2, Bortle 3. And um, I've got R6 with a 24 mil 1.8 over there, and I've got R5 with a 1635 right here. This is unreal. But camera lady said I was being kind of Goldilocks because it's like so unreal that it's kind of hard to shoot. And it's basically, it just looks like apocalyptic. So I've got 10 seconds F4 for four, ISO 4000, uh, and the moon just set. So now we're getting dark. Milky Way is going to come up over there in about half an hour to an hour. And I'm just shooting this and it just, the entire sky is just completely like blood red. It's just, it's so gnarly. I've never seen anything like this here and at this, uh, at this latitude. This is so crazy. So what I'm doing is because I want to see how much it shifts over time. I'm definitely doing a time lapse with the 24. The problem is the 24 is, it's not wide enough. Uh, and I've got the 16 here, so I think I'm going to start time lapsing with this at these settings. And we're just, uh, we're going to see what happens. I, I'm half tempted to do another phone shot out here too. Um, in any case, we're going to let this time lapse. And then when the Milky Way comes up, I'm going to try to shoot that and see if it messes it up. Because it might actually mess it up. It might be like too red. You know, I don't know. Uh, and then we'll go back into the studio and I want to edit some of these with you guys so you can just see my thought process and what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about. Because this is just, this is insane. I've got one, of course, classic me, classic New Mexico. I've got one lone giant uh, yucca cactus right there that's kind of silhouetted in my frame. It looks pretty cool. So hopefully we'll at least get some like surreal otherworldly looking shots and then maybe blend some of these for a star it'll be like a red star trail that might be kind of creepy i don't know it might not work at all but we'll see so uh maybe enjoy a time lapse and i'll see you in a second Studio. That was easily one of the best things that I've seen in a very long time. It's been a long time since I've seen the Aurora anyways, but I've never seen it like that from here. I mean, I'm in Silver City, New Mexico, 32 degrees north latitude. That's insane. I'm also really curious to see who else, like, who's the, the farthest south in the northern hemisphere that saw it and captured it. 
So if you were lower than, than me, than 32 degrees north on the latitude, let me know where you were at, because uh, I think that's fascinating. This is definitely a once in a lifetime thing, potentially, and the fact that I saw this much of it from almost the Mexican border, like, is just mind blowing. All right, so I've already added the time lapse, obviously. Um, those were amazing, even better than I had hoped, getting the streaks and the little bursts and stuff. Let's just jump in and I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna need to do much to these to edit them because they're very monochromatic and minimalist, but let's just jump in and see what I've got. I've, I might have gotten a couple panels and stuff, so let's see. All right, so the first couple I did some light painting, painted this cactus. Of course, the red here isn't very interesting, so I might blend them, but also I kind of like the silhouette after I got situated. Let's see. I was thinking maybe I needed to do a pano or something, but I think this image is pretty strong by itself. So is this road shot. So I like that one. I thought I would like the vertical one better because this reaches a little more, but I think I like the horizontal one better. So I did kind of intentionally overexpose this, so we had a little bit to work with down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull the highlights down just a little bit. See, if we boost that too much though, that looks yucky. I don't, I don't want it to, I want it to look a little more natural, so I don't really need to boost that. What I might do is, I know it's pink, but I want to cool it off just a pinch. Like maybe like that. Just subtle, so you can see a little of the blue in there. But the biggest thing I want to do since I shot this at 6400 is definitely the AID noising. This is the best thing that Adobe's ever invented. <laughs> I really don't even want to do that much more to this. I do want to take out this tiny little power line right there. And maybe this plane or satellite, whatever it was, plane. I might try to sharpen the foreground just a pinch. I'm just going to do a very low AI sharpening here. Okay, so we're looking at the yucca and the mountain and stuff in the background. And that helps sharpen it up just a little bit because what I didn't do is I did not focus stack. I didn't take multiple images. I, I tried to just stay a little bit far back from this and put it at infinity because I was on a time crunch here. And that's okay. And that's it. I don't even want to do anything else to this. Let's take a look at one of these with the road. Okay, denoised. And I really don't think we need to do much here. Again, though, I'm just going to take out those little satellite thingies. I just fixed the road down here because the road branched off and I didn't like that that branch. So just fix that a little bit. The only thing I might do is dodge a little bit on the road. Just because I like to accentuate that S curve that it's making. And that's it. I don't want to do anything else to this one either. Oh, look at the Milky Way that I did. Boy, that white balance is wonky. <laughs> look what happened. So this is the edge of the Aurora. And then you could just see how it like just cuts off like crazy. That is wild. I'm not even going to edit this. It's not even worth fixing. I just thought it was cool to see. All right, so here's the raws from the time lapse. And there was a couple that I thought were pretty awesome, like maybe one of these. 
Yeah, so we got a little flare up down here. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I don't even need to do that much to it. All right, well, I think I might go through and play with those a little bit more if I have some time, but that's pretty much the gist of it. I didn't really need to do hardly anything. I think the biggest issue with these is definitely the white balance. So with all of that pink and red in the sky, and I mean, it was so bright out there that it was like almost as bright as like at least a half moon, maybe three quarter moon. I didn't need lights out there. And so that was like lighting up the ground and making the ground pink and reflecting that. So you just got to watch that color balance, you know, and, and kind of correct that to your taste. But that was just incredible. I'm so lucky. Like, obviously, I wish I could have been farther north. I, I see a lot of my friends and peers and colleagues and just random people uh, posting some amazing stuff from farther north. And that's absolutely mind blasting. Just as a scientist and as, you know, a person who cares about the earth and nature and the universe and all of that, I'm just super stoked that as many people got to see this because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity that maybe a lot of people aren't ever going to get the chance to see again. And that was just, it was so it made me really happy to see that many people from all over the world being able to go out and just experience that. And it definitely made me very stoked to, because I didn't even think that that was going to be possible for me in New Mexico, especially in very far southwest New Mexico, to be able to see this. So I'm stoked for capturing those time lapses. And that's just a, just a real quick before I leave tip or lesson is definitely like know your gear. You know, this is why we practice. This is why you go out when it's boring or when you're tired of, you know, your neighborhood or or whatever. Like it doesn't matter. When you go out and you practice this kind of stuff and you know your gear in and out, that's going to set you up for getting stuff like this because when I went out there, I didn't think about settings at all. I just did the settings. Like almost muscle memory like this is what i need this is i took a couple of test shots and then bam i'm into the time lapse no messing around no wondering if this is right or if i should have done a better setting like i already know that i've got it dialed in because i do so much astro and i do so many time lapses and the point is like go out there even when you don't want to and if this is something you're interested in practice it constantly because it is a use it or lose it skill set and Practice makes perfect. So, you know, go out and just time lapse your house at night to go, you know, try to find something interesting, sure. But the point is, don't lose that skill set and just make sure you know your gear really, really well so that when something like this comes up, you don't spend time messing it up. There is a chance that it could come back tonight, although it won't be anything like it was last night, like what we just got. Um, but I might try to go out somewhere a little more interesting. This was like 15 minutes from my house, so it was really easy to get to. But I might try going out to City of Rocks or something and seeing if I can get something a little bit better. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here because I've got to get this video edited. And then I've got a pack. I'm leaving for California for nine days. A lot of cool stuff. Looking forward to getting back to the Redwoods. Hopefully I'll have a video on that. No guarantees, but I'm definitely... that's why I'm going out there, obviously, but <laughs> hopefully that turns out well. So yeah, let me know. Uh, did you see it? Did you get a picture of it? Uh, and what was your latitude? How, how far were you, were you more southerly than I am in the northern hemisphere? Very curious about that. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, all the goods. If you leave me a comment down below, I'll definitely answer it. Uh, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support the channel, I've got uh, channel memberships, which is awesome. A lot of extra content over there. Preset packs, workshops. If you want to learn how to do stuff like this, not necessarily like Northern Lights, but like Astro and Wildlife and Landscape, I do private workshops all across the Southwest. You can check out my workshop list for both um, group workshops and private workshops. And those are very tailored to what you want and the amount of time that you want to learn and all of that kind of stuff. So check out the links down below for that. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.